I joined a company in late 2018, very well funded by SoftBank, and that whole idea was democratizing AI. You know, five, six years later, we're still talking about democratizing AI, but you know, it's getting more concentrated, right? You have Facebook with Llama, you have OpenAI, you have Microsoft, right? Where, I mean, we are, I think there are, you know, maybe we're smaller shops, we are seeing this, but I mean, in some ways it has kind of more concentrated. And then you have, of course, you know, a hub, you get hub where you want hugging face. I mean, like, I, I, I like to pick on this idea of democratizing AI. Have we done a great job? And my, my interpretation is, on the on the certain levels we have, but at the same time, is AI still sitting in the ivory towers of OpenAI, the universities, and and Microsoft of the world, right? I think that's something we as a community need to address. And how do we break down that even further to get people to to utilize this actually in enterprises? Yeah, and to, to jump off that, utilizing this in enterprises, and and particularly when I think about end executors, you know. Yes, it, it, it is good to break down these silos and be able to create more visibility to how the models actually work. I mean, when you're looking at a human machine interface, only understanding half of the problem makes it so that you're liable to make your own sort of mistakes. You talk about hallucinations. Let's talk about <laughs> human beings making human error. Yeah. So that's that's a, an important part, understanding that. But I think that, that AI right now, from what I'm seeing, is more of an offer. It's a gift. It's one of those sorts of you know tools that you put in the tool belt of, a, of an expert practitioner and of a novice practitioner to make it so that you you sort of close the gap between their ability to deliver in organizations. You see companies, you know, we work with companies all over the world where I see teams that are much, much smaller than they, they really need to be to serve the breadth of transformation needs of the organization. And so instead of those teams having to grow in their expert population, their expensive expert population, instead you can grow in your business user involvement involve your community, use AI to bridge that gap, capture information from more people, and then help them make evidence-based decisions. Because that's the point that I wanted to hit on before. I hear the words data-driven decision-making, but data turning into evidence, I think is really the nugget we're looking for. Because otherwise you're looking at a lot of explanation-based decision-making. People say, I see the information, I can explain it, I can explain it. But turning that into real evidence, I think the AI bridges that gap nicely and empowers the people to make a meaningful difference. Maybe on the democratization part of uh, of AI and and large language models, if if anything, we're seeing convergence on on on, on possibilities, on tooling, on, but that also gives a huge amount of of, of possibilities also outside these these bigger ones. With, will be interesting to see what, for example, Apple does with uh, an LLM on, on a device, because imagine you can tap in into, for example, document your local LLM and then use that uh, um, on your own phone, on your own device, on your own laptop. Then it's it's outside of these big app providers. Uh, then, then privacy suddenly works out pretty well. And the fact that smaller models um, are, are becoming increasingly powerful at doing very specific tasks and that you can actually uh, tap into that. I think that that actually is moving in the right direction on if we're talking about democratizing of, of, of AI models. Uh, yeah, if I, if I could chime in, I actually think that, that, that this is a multidimensional thing. Uh, at the model layer, especially for large models, there's certainly consolidation because it requires incredible resources. You know, financial and, and other types of resources in order to be able to build and train and keep these models updated. So so that that can't really be called, I think, democratized, although there's certainly plenty of competitors and you could argue that it's getting commoditized. On all of the smaller models in open source, uh, it certainly is democratized where, you know, an individual can take, you know, open source models and on their, you know, laptop train them. And, and deploy them and, and use them and soon, you know, on mobile devices. But I think, again, I think the, the more exciting thing for sort of the majority of us uh, working in enterprises is that sort of the applied AI is democratized, meaning that any person now can use a tool like Mind Studio and and leverage any of these like models that exist now and and start to build real applications that solve real problems today. And, and that's available right now. As I said, over 50,000 of these things have already been built with Mind Studio by completely non-technical people. You don't need to be a software developer to build these things. The average build time for one of these AIs is anywhere from like 15 minutes to a couple of hours. And, and so 
that's certainly democratization where non-technical people can solve real business problems with, with massive ROI because there's like automation and, and all kinds of other things like that that, that uh, were impossible, you know, two years ago and now are trivial, trivially easy to do. And so that's certainly democratization. Yeah, and if I may, I would like to also add a particular perspective to this uh, discussion about democratizing. So when we are talking about democratizing, of course, we are talking about very end user, but there is a foundation to really help that. It's not like we just go to end user and we provide them the information, at least with analytics, that is not all the time AI, right? So when we are talking about analytics, we are talking about 100% accuracy. We are talking about particular type of AIs that can apply to analytics. And that kind of you know, accuracy, that kind of analytics, bringing to end user democratizing, it requires a foundation that there are power users, there are super users or developers, data engineers, data scientists, there are DevOps, there are you know, different particular type of functions, all of them need to be improved toward that direction. So at the end, you get really the best kind of uh, democratized self-service capabilities for the end user that is meaningful. And without having those around it and building that, I don't think that would be a meaningful result at the end to really, really democratize uh, analytics and uh, AI driven analytics uh, to the you know to the masses, right? So, but that, that's why. We, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Carl. But uh, I, I would argue that's exactly what you're seeing today. Um, that uh, companies are are building the tooling uh, to be able to enable, um, let's see, uh, things that weren't possible a couple of months, uh, e even a year ago, but now is possible and, and adapted to the roles, whether it's very technical roles, whether it's really non-data savvy people being able to ask about their data and get an answer in their data and even get the explanation on what they're seeing. Uh, because uh, for some, even we're all in, in, in BI and, and intelligence for us charts it's 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 like breeding, uh, but for some it's it's difficult. It's still difficult to understand. But thanks to AI, um, you're you're able to generate a description on what they're seeing, combined with because you're right, the accuracy is really important in the, in data. Combined with the accuracy of data and 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 um, and and the true, um, the true exact answer because. If anything, uh, a large language model is good in, and it's it's in convincing language, um, and, and and that's something that that often still needs to be tackled, and where you see a lot of companies working on accuracy, where um, you're trying to find out and putting the guardrails to make sure that everything is really correct, because you don't want companies making the wrong mistakes based on a very convincing argument, but that was completely hallucinated uh, 